Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another book haul. So every time my book haul cart gets full, I kind of need to film a video just because that's the way that I separate them. Otherwise I end up with stacks of books everywhere. And recently things kind of escalated pretty quickly. Um, a couple weekends ago, I was just really bored around town. So I hit up my favorite places in uh, Fargo. And then also I got a lot of gifts recently, which isn't something that usually happens to me, but a couple of my followers have been really generous to me and I kind of needed the like boost <laughs> because I am currently uh, like waiting to find out if I am COVID positive. So I have to quarantine for two weeks until I have symptoms or else, you know, just trying to follow the rules. And that doesn't affect my job or like change anything, but you'll notice in a lot of videos coming out around this time that that's what's happening. Um, if I don't end up finding out or quarantining in time, like I'm not gonna be able to go to Thanksgiving with my family, which is a really hard thing. My dad works at a job where he works with vulnerable people. My parents aren't vulnerable. Both of my parents are healthy as a horse, so I wouldn't be risking them, but I just wouldn't risk my dad's job um, and risk my dad's clients like that. Um, and yeah, I just wouldn't risk anyone. So anyway, there's enough moping about that. I talk about it in enough videos, but not even that I'm making excuses for myself because I just buy lots of books anyway, but just kind of explaining a little bit of what's going on. But let's go ahead and get started. This is going to take a while as it is. So let me kind of just start working my way through. I'm going to be filling the cart as I go instead of like reaching to take them off and put them back on. So because what I do is I fill up my cart, it's sitting in my room, I fill it, you see this in videos lately, and then once it's full I do a video and then I find places for all of my books. And then it starts with it empty again. Sometimes I use it too for filming to stack books in and move it around, but I've been loving it. This is one of the best like bookish accessories that I've purchased for myself is this cart. I really love it. So let's get started filling it back up. Let's start with some self pubs that I bought for myself and we'll go with that. First off, there's one book that I am currently reading it myself right now um, is Riffs and Refrains by Devney Perry. You probably will already know my opinions of this by the time you see this video because I'm listening to it on audio as well and I'm almost done with it already. I'm reading this book with my friend Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. I love this woman so, so dearly. She feels like an older sister to me. Um, and I just love reading books with her and I've read a lot of books with her lately and I plan to continue for a long time. We also have a um, book club together called the Rake Appreciation Society. So definitely check out our um, Discord for that. Then I bought the next book in the series too because my guess is that we'll continue on and read this one together as well. These are books two and three in the Hush Note series. They were written by three different authors. It was Serena Bowen, Devney Perry, and then Rebecca Yaros. I've never read a Devney Perry or Rebecca Yaros before, so it's nice to kind of intro to them. Serena Bowen is one of my favorite authors. She's an autobi self-pub author for me. And I just loved the artwork on the on this series, and I really am liking it. They all are kind of second chance. Are they second chance? This one might not be. I don't know that they are, but the first two are. So I bought those. Then I found myself a copy of Torrid by Nikki Sloan. Um, I have a few Nikki Sloans to show you, but we're reading Sorted for the Taboo Book Club this month, and I just decided to grab Torrid as well, so I have the duology. Um, this is a very dark romance. There is lots of dubious consent. This is mafia. It has lots of dirty talk in it. It's fabulous. It's Nikki Sloan. She's the queen. Then I picked up Three Little Mistakes. I'm slowly putting together the Blindfold Club by her. I have almost all of them now. Um, this one is about the owner of the Blindfold Club, Joseph something. I can't remember his name now. It just went out of my head. But I absolutely love this series so much. And they all center around the Blindfold Club, which is a basically an escort service or type of thing like that. But it's delicious. I love it. Then I picked up The Rivalry by Nikki Sloan. I read this book in October. Um, this book is, these are all shiny, so 
Sorry also for the weird lighting, but now that we've entered the, you know, darker time of the year, I just only have lighting for a very slim amount of the day. So there'll be a lot of videos with awkward ring light, just so you know. But anyway, this is a uh, sports romance between two rival sports teams and it's the cheerleader from one team and the tight end from the other team. This book had some amazing empowerment moments in it. The hero Jay is definitely on my book boyfriends list. When I do an updated one, he will be on it because um, he is swoony as all hell and I love him. Then I picked myself up a copy of A King So Cold by Ella Fields. This is a romantic fantasy. It's a dark one. I really liked it. Um, it has a beautiful cover, so I needed to own one. The sequel is coming soon, they said, and I think it's called, like, something to do with a king. I can't, not a king. Something to do with a prince, maybe? I don't know, but I loved this book. It was great, so I needed a copy of it. So those are some self-pub books that I bought for myself. Let me stack them down here. Um, then I received a book from a giveaway recently. There's a picture of it on my Instagram. Um, there is this book photographer. Um, I think it's called uh, Lindy Robinette Photography. Yeah, Lindy Robinson Photography. And I found her on Book Talk and actually won a book signed by her cover model. So she actually, um, you should look up her TikTok because she does these photo shoots and then also does like B-roll so that authors can make like book trailers and stuff. And her stuff is so sexy. And so she has certain models that she works with all the time. And this one I know is a military romance, which I know some of my viewers are wanting me to read more of them. And I have some more coming up. Like I have some that I've been purchasing um, and I just need to get to them. So here's another stack. Um, here is another military romance. Oh, no, not that one. This one that came in my uh, book reveal, romance reveal book box. This one is about, is this one not the one that was in the military? Which one was in the military? This one is, he was in the army. This one is a sports romance. This one, he was, didn't make it into NFL draft and then joined the military, maybe. I don't know what's going on, whatever. This one's called Healing Scars by Audrey Ravine. And whatever it's about, it sounded good. This one's a second chance romance, and I know there was a military aspect to it. So I'll definitely check that out. And then this one is a quarterback who gets banned for doing drugs. And so he needs to get clean, I think. Um, and this one's called Dare to Tempt by Carly Phillips. Little known fact, me and one of my best friends, we used to read a ton of Carly Phillips, her mass market paperbacks from back in the day. So I did not know that she was self-pubbing some books these days. But I remember loving her a lot, so I definitely want to give this a try. And then I also got Dating Games from TK Lee from that box. Um, this one says it's about a fake girlfriend to a billionaire, which I'm here for. I love billionaires. I love fake dating. Um, let's see, what else are new ones? Here's a couple new purchases I made for myself as well. Um, and you'll see why in another minute, but... Um, I have only read one Megan Frampton, but the first one I read was the first in this series called um, A Duke's Daughters. And so this is actually book four. And I have book two and three over there. I'll show you in a second. But this one I purchased myself. I love the colors on this. I love the theme. It reminds me of some like sports colors <laughs> that are like orange and blue. I don't know. I just really like the color theme. Obviously these are going to look beautiful in my bookshelf, which is another reason I needed to do a haul video because I have a ton of historical romances that I want to put in the rainbow shelf and I can't put them on the rainbow shelf till I haul them because otherwise I put them in and have to take them back out. It's a struggle, right? First world problems. So then there's this one, which is called Tall, Duke, and Dangerous, which is the second in the Hazards of Hunting, or the, the Hazards of Dukes. And I already own the first one, which is Never Kiss a Duke. Um, and this one, I think, is about a girl who has to get self-defense self classes, which is awesome. So there's this hero named um, 
Nash who's going to teach her self-defense. And I'm like, give it to me now. I also just love the cover of this one too. Like her color themes are gorgeous. So this is a Megan Frampton. I definitely want to read more of hers. Um, I particularly really liked the audio. So I'll have to find that on Scribd or something like that. Then I also bought myself, I don't know if this will be a good decision or not, but I remember seeing this book on some of my favorite fantasy booktubers channels and I think there's an element of romance in it and the books came out with these really like cool size slash cover and so I was like why not buy it so the book is called The Golem and the Genie and it's by Helene Wecker and I think this is Harper Collins came out with these limited editions of some books so the original book is like it's like a uh, bridge on the cover or whatever and I just remember the title because I always thought it was really interesting I know that golems they are in um, like Jewish mythology as well as um, genies obviously are like Middle Eastern and stuff which Jewish would be there too the Jen but I just thought it was really interesting and so this takes place in like 1899 so it's got a historical element and so I thought it could be fun I mean, I don't always read a book like this type, but maybe I'll find the audio for it and read along. Um, lately, I've been in more of a fantasy mood, so, you know, I might get inspired to do that. Then, I'm already kind of nervous about this one because I bought first and looked up later, and that is The Duplicate Bride by Ginny Baird. So, the premise of this is that there's twin sisters, and one of them is kind of set to marry this like uppity rich guy and she convinces her twin to swap places with her and then the guy ends up falling in love with her twin and I thought that was so cool and I loved the cover like I'm a sucker for a pretty wedding dress I just love the simplicity and also I was like that's exactly the kind of wedding dress I want one day for my fictional love when he's here for me someday that's what I want. But then when I looked up reviews about it, I found out that it is like a fade to black, no sex scenes on page. And I was like, but maybe I'll be in a mood one day or maybe I will give this as a gift to someone. My sister doesn't appreciate sex as much as me <laughs> in books. So maybe this could be like a nice gift for her or something. But um, this just really caught my eye. And so I bought it. I still buy for shelves. And then when I looked it up, I was like, oh no, there's no sexy time. Um, we'll just go through the rest of this stack. Give me a second. So now let's do the gifts that I got because they go with the historical. So one of my viewers, her name is Monica. I talked about her in one of my vlogs when I hauled stuff. She saw that I was sad. And so she has been sending me things from my wish list, which now I feel like bad putting stuff on my wish list, but I won't because people like to be generous and I like getting presents. I'm not going to pretend I don't, but it was really funny though, because today I filmed a booktuber, booktuber consumer video <laughs> and then I got all these presents and I was just like, wow, it's true. But, um, this is, so these are all from one of my viewers. And they came over different days, like this all wasn't in one box. But she just kept saying, oh, you're getting guess something. Oh, you're getting something. I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing to me? So I'm super excited. But we'll start with the historicals here. So this is where I got book two and three for the Duke's Daughter series. Um, again, the colors are so beautiful. So this one is the Duke's uh, Lady Be Reckless. It's kind of funny because they changed the cover art on these. Um, where's the first one? I'll show you. And it really threw me off because these two, you can see like they say the title of the book and then underneath it, it says this is a Duke's Daughters novel, which is what usually happens with historical romances. But this one, the second book was called Lady Be Reckless, but they put a Duke's Daughter here and they put the title down here. So I didn't know if this was just like a misprint or like an ex like something, but when I looked it up on Amazon, that's what all of the titles look like. But this is the only one in the series that it says the Duke's daughters, and then this is underneath it. 
So I just thought that was really unique anyway. So yeah, she sent me two of those from my wish list. Um, and then she sent me books one and two in the Cavisham Heiresses, which I hauled in my last one. They're these really beautiful colored um, series and it's about this one family and one of them is like a Christmas one and they just all have like bride in the title but um, my Barnes and Noble didn't have the one and two so I just had those on my wish list to get them and I did so there's the bad luck bride which is the first one and then there is the bride who got lucky and I think the rest of the series there is um, the luck of the bride and then there is um, the the bride wore white or something like that. No, I probably just made that up, but whatever. They're really beautiful, and so I'm really excited to try that series. I like things where the weddings are important. Then I was needing a new copy of Mine Till Midnight because my copy of it um, is ripping, and so I don't want to like read it anymore. And spoiler alert, I'm actually planning to reread um, some certain Lisa Klepez and some other books. This is gonna happen in December. I'm gonna be rereading my favorite books of the year to help me decide what my favorite ones are because I gave 216 books five stars. Not all five star is rated equal in my mind, so that's why I'm going to reread a few of them. And this is one that I'm going to reread, and my copy of it is a well, it was already a used copy, and so it's well loved. And when I open it, the step back is literally like, coming out of it so this is just a regular one it doesn't have the step back but for my purpose like that's exactly what I wanted um, so I'm very excited to reread this book and thank you for a copy of it then we get into the real gold here because that's all great but to get self-published books as presents is amazing to me because they are it's really hard to find them on sale it's really hard to find them if you do find them on sale as not a library copy um, that is something that I have struggled with because sometimes thrift books will say it's a library copy and sometimes it won't and the same can be said for Better World Books and a books sometimes it's just a tiny little dot that will tell you whether it is a library book or not and I just don't want those. Like I'll pay more for a new one if I have to, rather than to not have stickers all over my book because I dislike that. So the first thing I'll show you, these were also on my Amazon, well, all these were on my Amazon wish list, but I love Jennifer Ashley and she actually has this fantasy historical romance series. And I have the first one as a mass market, which is the mad, or not the mad bad Duke. It is Penelope and Prince Charming. And the second one is the mad bad Duke. And then it's Highlander Ever After. And then there's a little novella that's called The Longest Night. So these are supposed to be, this is called the Vingeria series. And they're supposed to be like fairy tale retellings. That's all that I know. I haven't, I know a couple of my friends on Instagram actually have read Penelope and Prince Charming. So I want to get into this series. I love fantasy romance and the fact that they're historical fantasy romance and our fairy tale, like I am here for it. So very excited to read these. Then I just have some random ones. So I'll show you. Um, this one I haven't read. I haven't read the play by L. Kennedy. That's why it was on my list. Um, very excited to try this. Um, I know this is a spinoff from the Off Campus series. I've loved everything I've read by L. Kennedy. I have not read everything she has written yet. So I'm making my way through it. And this is the next series that I haven't read yet. So I want to do that. I love how big this one is because sometimes her books aren't long enough for me. Um, then I got Good Boy with this is the first in the WAG series, which is a spinoff series from the Him series by Serena and Elle. Um, so it has Jamie and Ryan in it. Um, and I love that. I'm slowly collecting all of Serena Bowen's and Al Kennedy's books and oh, I just love getting them. Oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. Um, she's, oh, this is one I grabbed. So I'll set that aside. I shoved this in together. Um, Ringmaster by Brianna Hale. This is one I have been wanting because this is 
probably my favorite Brianna Hale. Um, this one came out this year. This one's great. If you want to try Brianna Hale, but you've heard they're pretty dark and crazy, this one, it starts out dark because she just writes darker romance, but this to me is like the lightest one I've read yet. I've only read five of her books. Five of her books. Actually, that's a lie because I've read her new series too. So I've read seven of her books. This one is an age gap circus romance. So it gave me all of the vibes from The Greatest Showman. But um, this is an age gap. Nothing happens till your character is over 18. And this also has a found family element. There is horses and like horse workmanship going on in this book. And it also takes place in the UK. And this girl runs away from her abusive father and joins a circus. And she falls in love with the ringmaster. And it's amazing. Also to have some of my favorite books to hold up and stuff is amazing. Um, a Secret for a Secret by Helena Hunting. I loved this book. I just read this series a couple, like last week. So I had just put it on my wish list. Um, I already own the second book. I need to get the first book, but this was my favorite of the three. This is about King and Queenie and their names are cheesy, but this couple is adorable. And King, Ryan Kingston is so swoony and I love him. Um, this is the All In series, and I cannot wait for the spinoff series, which is supposed to be a new adult series, um, about the kids from this series, and from this series and the Puck series, and I'm just, I couldn't be more excited. I love it. Then, I'm so excited to get this one. This one's been on my wish list since people started talking about it, and I just haven't got around to committing to buy it for myself. Um, and that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. The second book is out as well. Um, I have never read a Jennifer L. Armentrout. I have never even like tried either. Um, but obviously I've heard some mixed things, but I've heard mostly good things about it. I know that it starts pretty slow and I think that that's part of the reason I put off purchasing it. But when I looked at it too, I realized that like this is a big book, but there's not a ton on each page. So I feel like if I tuck into this, I mean, I can read pretty fast. I've just kind of held off because of reasons. I need to take a sip. And then the last one that she sent me, I think, um, from this stack anyway, is The Footman and I by Valerie Bowman. So also really excited for this. The story behind this is I actually had an ARC approved for this. But it was one of those on NetGalley where they still have the arcs on it, but the books have already come out. And I didn't realize that this was a self-pub of Valerie Bowman's because I actually own some books by her that are regular pubbed. But this one is kind of a quirky trilogy, which I think the entire trilogy is out already. Um, it's so cool. She even has like a cast of characters because... She says in the beginning of the book that all three of the books are taking place simultaneously. And so the prologue of each book is the same, but from a different character's point of view. And it's these three wealthy men who they basically, I think one of them's trying to shirk his duty and one of them's trying to find someone to really marry him for love and not for his title. And so I don't know everyone's motivations yet because I haven't read them all. I've only read like half of this book in the e-arc. I haven't actually finished it. And when I saw that it already existed as like you could purchase it, I kind of wanted a copy just because historicals, I do love to read with my own two hands. I just like that more than reading them on a Kindle. So I really struggle with historical romance arcs, even though I want to read them. I just like holding them in my hand. So again, Monica, you know, we talk on Discord. Thank you for your generosity to me. I just... I don't feel worthy of it. So thank you so much. All right. So then some used ones that I got. I picked up The Friend Zone by Kristen Callahan. This is book two in the Game On series. Um, I got this off of Thrift Books. It's a little bit bent, you see, but I will flatten, I will flatten this baby out. Um, I'm slowly collecting this series. This one is the same cover as Untouchable, except he's like tanner, <laughs> like his skin tone is like darker. And I love when I find books with the same cover. It feels like I'm playing ro romance cover bingo. And um, this also happened with Love in the Wild and The Fae King's Curse. They have the same cover model, but they change like the hair color. 
and one of them has like tattoos and stuff because that's the life of a self-pub author like you buy your covers from people so I just really like that though because both of these books have football players in them and both of them are super sexy so there you go um then I have ooh, where's the other one do -do -do. Do -do -do. I don't know where it's at right now but I have um three books by Amanda Bouchette I can't find the other one right now but I also have um not Breath of Fire, what's the third one? Um, the Fire of Life or something. I got a really busted up copy of this, so I'll be honest, I'm probably gonna order another one. This is not a mostly good copy. Like, this has writing all over it. Um, like, yeah, it is a really beat up copy. And anyway, but it's okay, you don't always get people being honest about the state that a book is in when they're selling it. And I pay so little for them that I don't really fight it. I know some people probably would, and maybe I should, but I just don't really fight it when they're like, I paid $3 for it, you know? I just want you to be honest with me because I would have bought a different one. Um, but I really love this series. And then Heart of Fire, I have a copy of Heart of Fire, but that one actually has defected pages in it. And it was a previous library copy. So the library obviously, like, someone had to have complained. I don't know. But then I also want to try um, her sci-fi series. This looks so Doctor Who. I just, I wanted it. This is the first one in the Nightcatcher series. So I wanted to try something else by Amanda Bouchette. And then I got Firelight by Kristen Callahan. Um, I wanted to try her fantasy series. I think this one is like steampunk kind of thing. So this one's the first one in the Darkest London series. So want to do that. Um, I actually have a few other like new ones that I purchased. I didn't realize I've been wanting to try Maya Rodell. So I got the two of the books in the Gilded Age Girls. Um, I wasn't a huge fan. Well, I've only read one, so just remember that. But I wasn't over the moon for The Rogue of Fifth Avenue. And I definitely want to try more Joanna Shoup because a lot of my friends really love her. But these are also Gilded Age romances. And I know that they have some progressive girls. These ones are also blurred by Sarah McLean. And so I want to give these a try. So this one is Some Like It's Scandalous. And an heiress to remember. And I think these are book two and three in the series. So I'm missing, yes, I'm missing Duchess by Design, but I will get that one. So I want to give these a try at some time. I love just the plain dress on the front. It looks great. <coughs> I picked up The Duke Effect by Sophie Jordan. I also picked up the audio for this. I really like Sophie Jordan's books on audio. I've been having a struggle liking a Sophie Jordan so far though. I liked The Virgin and the Rogue quite a bit and then everything else I've read has been so-so. Um, but this book, after reading The Virgin and the Rogue, I wanted to read this one so badly because this is about um, Nora who is a botanist and I really want to read it. Um, my friend Shay got to read an arc of it and she wasn't a huge fan but we'll see. I grabbed um, Lady Grace or Lady Louisa's uh, Christmas Night, um, which is part of the Wyndham's Duke's Daughter series, which I've slowly been collecting those as well. Um, I was a real big fan of Grace Burroughs of two of her books that I read, and then I just haven't read more of them. And I'm kind of disappointed in myself for doing that, but I just haven't been in the mood. And I thought I would pick up a couple Christmas books. I don't particularly like reading books themed around Christmas because they're just like super predictable usually but that might just be my jaded heart saying that but I like Grace Burroughs I like the Wyndham family what I've seen so far and this one was pretty and I do like the Christmas aesthetic it'll make for some nice photos so I grabbed it I grabbed Who Wants to Marry a Duke by Sabrina Jeffries because because I've purchased a lot of Sabrina Jeffries, haven't read one yet, I know, my fault, but I like books with heroines who have unique jobs, and so this one, the heroine is a chemist, and she, um, she's a bookish, and the Marlo Drake, 
he needs help finding who killed his dad, maybe? I'm not sure. Who killed his brother? I'm not sure. But she's a chemist, and I really liked that thought, and so I grabbed it. Kind of a cute cover, not my favoriteest I've ever seen, but when I heard what she was about, I was like, I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna grab it and see what's going down and see if I like it. So, sometimes you just do that. Then, also from Barnes & Noble that were new picks, I saw these, um, I've been trying to find more contemporary romance that are super sexy in mass market paperbacks. Um, and I haven't read any Lorelei James, but I snapped up, I snapped up these two. These are books one and two in the Want You series. So, um, there's Want You to Want Me and I Want You Back. And I like that. And I think that I found the audio for one of these. I might have bought it because it was only like seven fifty or something. So we got those. Um, and then we got used books. So I found some good ones at my thrift store and a couple that I ordered. We'll go with these. I have never read a Megan Hart before, but all of these books from this one bookstore, both hardcover and paperback are all 99 cents. And there was Deeper and Switch. And I don't know, I mean, these have that look of the, the 2010s books that were like 50 Shades related. So I don't know if they're like BDSM or if they're thrilling or like whatever. But I grabbed them because I've, I've seen her books and I just like the stark covers. Like I really think that's pretty art on them. There's a reason why books like that catch people's eye. And since they were only 99 cents, I was like, I wouldn't pay $16 for that, but I will buy it for that. Then I grabbed um, Perfect by Judith McNaught. This one doesn't have a fancy cover or anything, but um, this was one of hers that I didn't have yet. Um, this one I think is one of her contemporary stories and it's like a murder mystery. So I wanted to grab that. I found an almost perfect condition Tender Rebel by Joanna Lindsay, which I've already had on a step back Saturday. Um, the only thing is that it isn't the foiled um, name. So if I find one with the foil, I'll, I'll probably upgrade it. But it barely has spine crackage and it was 99 cents. So I scooped that shit up. I grabbed this Prisoner of Passion by Trudy Thompson. Um, this is one of the like futuristic romances, but I love the covers of these ones. So there's this cover. This is Prisoner of Passion. And then there was another futuristic one I grabbed. This was Keeper of the Rings. The dude has an armband, which is sexy as hell. This is by Nancy Kane, and it's another futuristic romance. I have yet to read one of the one of those. I haven't read Joanna Lindsay's or anyone else's, but their covers by Love Spell are always so beautiful that I don't care. I found River of Tomorrow by Dorothy Garlock. I again, I love this orange and blue um, color theme. It's so pretty. Again, with like perfect spine. I love that bookstore. Um, I think those, I think I, did I also find this one there or did I get this at Thrift Books? I think I found this one there. I found Infamous by Virginia Henley. I love this mirror happening. And then I also found Ravished by Amanda Quick there. And then these other, oh no, I also found this one, An Unforgettable Lady by, this is Jessica Bird. Um, I remember when, I think it was Lacey, I think it was Lacey, who did a video where she like read books by authors' pen names. And so um, this one I think is like a thriller, but I thought I'd grab it. Um, I haven't been a huge fan of the Black Digger Brotherhood. I just got bored with it pretty quickly. Um, but I really like her writing, and so I thought I would try one of the other ones. And then I ordered two Sophie Jordans, which, again, I'm basically just getting these to own all of hers. But I love this one because they're on the stairs. So this is How to Lose a Bride in One Night. This is one of the Forgotten Princesses. And they are, she's in her wedding dress, her flowers are on the ground, and he's stripping her down on the stairs. I love it. So it looks like kind of a runaway princess thing. 
Here's the thing though, a lot of an author's books cannot be for you and then you can find ones that are. So I just keep going. Um, I got Too Wicked to Tame as well. So this one I grabbed because it's the next book after, this is her second book that she wrote after Once Upon a Wedding Night. Now I was not a fan of Once Upon a Wedding Night, but again, I wanted to try another of her beginnings and see. Um, and also, yeah, I love her covers. She has a lot of red in her covers. And then the last one I'll talk about, we have read, like, I made it. My throat is about to go out too. I have been collecting the hard covers of the Bridgertons and this won't be the last one that I haul because I still need ones with the step back on the back, but this one I'm pretty excited about because I'm also going to start my reread of this one. And so I found the hardcover of the Viscount Who Loves Me. And so here's the thing. This is the second time I bought this. Here is the back. Oh God, they're so beautiful. I ordered this on eBay and it told me it was a hardback and I got a paperback which also had the step back, which was great because, so I wasn't like angry. I didn't like complain about it or anything because the Viscount Who Loved Me that I own is the one with just the gazebo on the front and there was nothing in the background at all. So it was just the gazebo. So even though this one wasn't what I was looking for, I was like, well, I'll take it because it has the step back still and that's an upgrade from what I had. But then I went on thrift books and I saw that they had a hardcover in perfect condition that wasn't a library copy and I got it for $4.50. And so it is almost in perfect condition. There's just a little bit of stuff on the top. Um, it is absolutely perfect inside and it's got the sexy bit on the back. This is probably one of my favorite covers of it. I'm still missing um, three of them with the back on the back and it's hard to tell because it isn't just a certain edition that has this beautiful back. It has just been random as far as I can tell. I don't know how to look it up because the ISBN number for some of these is exactly the same and then it won't have the step back on the back. But because I'm not paying more than five to seven dollars for each one I've ordered, I just keep ordering them and trying to get it. And then if it's not, I just like donate it or resell it. And it's not the end of the world for me at all to do that. So there you go. That is my most recent haul. I think this is haul number 39. Um, thank you for the things that I've got. Thank you to Lindy uh, Rob Robinson Photography. Thank you to Monica. I really needed the boost and it's been so nice getting stuff in the mail. It feels good whether I buy it myself or someone gives it to me. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.